Good morning, everyone, and happy July. I hope that you're all doing well and ready for the first podcast of the new month. Today, we're doing something different. We're adopting a new philosophy when it comes to me playing Street Fighter, and I'm very curious to see how this philosophy will pan out live on today's first stream. We've also got news, some chill Q&A, some updates on various things. So it is a great start to a new month right here on today's episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Alrighty, everyone. Good morning. It's July 1st, 2024. I'm DSP. Welcome to the show. Now, before someone says something, all right, we have a new background for the month. And you might say, is that background lopsided? Well, yes and no. I have this big piece of art that I like to bring out every once in a while. However, I don't really have another piece of art that's of that stature. Besides an insanely huge Super Mario Brothers 3 uh, painting that I have that really doesn't even fit in frame. And I've only used it once and people didn't really like it as a background because it was too big. So, the only way I can realistically have this as part of my background is to kind of have it be lopsided. Now, I have various other pictures and paintings that I've used. I've actually never done this configuration before. And so yesterday I was adjusting the background trying to see how it looked best. After testing... It actually looked best having it like this because, first of all, you actually get to see my LED lighting in the background nicely. No matter what color I actually use, it actually stands out quite well when I have it set like this so you can actually see it splash against the wall. Previously, you wouldn't really be able to see it that well. So this actually highlights the lighting. That's number one. Number two, I did have this further over here, and it just created a giant hole behind my head that looked odd because it wasn't on this side, but it was on this side. So if it really bothers everyone, we can adjust this further. But after I was testing last night trying to get this to, to be like, like set, this was like the best I got. I do think I have to move the camera slightly, though. I'm trying to be centered. I'm trying to see if the chair... Yeah, see the chair is now centered to the... Yeah, it's a slightly better. So, anyway. <clears throat> this is what we're rolling with for now for the month. We've got Punch-Out in the background. And we've got Mega Man 3. Mega Man with the Shadow Blade versus Spark Man. And the Game Over sign. And we actually get to see the lighting this month. At least when I am uh, widescreen. Right? <clears throat> so. Good stuff. And I'm ready for the month of July. As you all know, the month of July is very empty for game releases, okay? Just to give you guys some perspective, because I have, you know, the list of game releases here after having followed all of those digital events last month. Here's what we're looking at. Ready? <laughs> Prepare your butts. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Fate, a Ninja Turtles roguelike game on consoles, July 17th. The Nintendo World Championships... July 18th on the Switch exclusively. Kunitsugami, that game that no one has any idea what the hell it is, but it's on Game Pass, comes out July 19th. And that's literally it. I'm sure there's other indie games and things in there. But July is by far the absolute deadest month of 2024 for game releases. There's literally nothing big coming out. All right? Yeah, I know. See, Flintlock? Who cares about Flintlock? Flintlock is like, oh, it's a Souls light game with graphics that kind of look like Dishonored. It's like, no one cares. We're playing Elden Ring. No one cares about that game. <laughs> Just being honest, no one gives two shits. <clears throat> so, FYI, um, this month, what we're going to be doing is finishing up all the big stuff that I've been doing, starting up some new projects, okay? Kind of filling in the gaps of the stuff that we've missed. A lot of things that, that came out in like May, June that I kind of skipped. Um, because I was busy with other stuff. 
And I think that July will be a good month to kind of play catch up on things that people want to see. Perhaps we'll bring back playthroughs that have been on hiatus for a bit. All right. Initially, my plan is to balance Street Fighter VI and the Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC on day streams. Shadow of the Erd Tree, we're about halfway through. Okay. We just hit the 20 hour mark on Saturday. And taking a look at how long everyone claims it is, there's two, still two major areas of the DLC we haven't even stepped foot in yet. And then there's the entire northern region, which we've seen but haven't explored yet. So we've got probably half of it left, okay? So I, I expect fully, you know, another week to two week, perhaps. Uh, two weeks, perhaps, of Elden Ring uh, continuing on. No exaggeration, another 20 hours. If you do, like, you know, if I do three three-hour streams a week, yeah, it's going to be another two to three weeks to beat it. So probably a big chunk of July will be continuing and finishing Elden Ring, okay? Street Fighter Six right now... Street Fighter 6 is very exciting. M. Bison is out for about a week now. Um, I've used him a lot, and I like this character to the point where I think, number one, I'm going to get him to master as soon as even today, okay? Which is pretty crazy. Within a week, I'll get him to master. And number two, I think I may actually adopt him as one of my main characters. I really like this character. I'm learning more and more every time I play with him. In fact, I watched some videos last night of M. Bison. I think I get the character now. I don't really think I understood the character up until this point. And now I think I kind of understand what's going on. My entire game plan earlier was to play him like a previous character. That's not how you play Bison. The idea with Bison is you get the first hit, you get the mine on the character, and now you're free to do whatever you want. Because whenever you hit them with a special move, the mine explodes, giving you protection. If they try to punish that special move because they think it's unsafe, they get punished, they get hit. And then you can continue a combo after the fact into another mine, and it just continues for the entire round. So that's the fun part is I didn't realize I was watching last night, and I was like, oh, that's how they're all playing it. Because I was wondering, why, why middle of a match would they do a Psycho Crusher? That's completely unsafe. Because it is safe. Because the mine on the enemy made it safe. Why would they be doing the scissors when they know scissors can be punished? Because the mine is on the opponent. I was like, oh... And that, see, I'm watching high level matches of like master and legend players, so they don't fall for it. Regular people will. Regular people who are not top level players are going to fall for that strategy all the time. They're not going to realize the mind's about to explode and I'm going to, you know, take a juggle. So that's what I'm going to try to implement today. Every time that I juggle someone, I'm going to try to go right into the hands that give the mind. And then I'm going to try to use this strategy to bait people into getting hit by this mind all the time and then push to the corner for a big corner juggle. I have some interesting things, strategies I learned that I'm going to try to implement today. So we'll see how it goes. But I think with the, what I've watched and learned overnight, I think I may do better with Bison today. And keep in mind, today we are doing something completely new in Street Fighter VI. I've never done this before in the entire year that I've played the game. Directly per your feedback. Today when I play Street Fighter VI, I'm going to play two to three matches in a row against two to three people, right? Not matches, sets is what I meant to say. You know, best two out of three. I'll play two or three people in sets, and then I take a break, like a five-minute break, where I literally just sit here, and we talk about what just happened to those matches, what you guys thought about them. I do shout-outs and things like that. It's going to end up being a more social experience. You know, up to this point when I played fighting games, Street Fighter particularly, I didn't really do that. It was just me playing, playing, playing. Playing, 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 playing. And just playing nonstop. Okay? Basically makes it so that I get full of adrenaline. Okay? I never really catch my breath. My blood pressure goes all the way up. Okay? And when that happens, I tend to keep just requeuing, requeuing, requeuing. And I make a lot of mistakes. I know that's why I'm doing I'm getting so angry about like a loss that I jump right into the next match and now I play poorly because I'm already heated about that last loss and I start have worse execution. Don't block on command. You know what I mean? So if I just step back every two to three matches and I say, okay, let's just sit here and chill for five minutes, everyone. Let's talk. Number one, it's gonna be a more social stream for you guys who are here live. Number two, for those watching. On demand, it's going to be a better experience instead of just me getting tilted and losing half the matches. There will be more to it. And number three, I think overall, it's going to be better for my experience actually like playing better. I think rather than gaining a whole bunch of points because I start off strong, but then getting a loss, getting tilted and losing all those points, if I just step back and break for five minutes, 
I think it's actually going to interrupt that and allow me to get my head back on straight, right? And uh, and hopefully continue on <clears throat> at a good pace. So we're going to try this today. This is an experiment for sure. I've never done this before. The entire year that I've been playing Street Fighter Six, it's pretty much just nonstop me grind, 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 play, play, play. So let's see if this new strategy works or not. Um, I'm actually excited for that. And that's, I mean, exactly right. AMS says, now you can actually interact with the people who are contributing. You're right. I don't. Usually during fighting game streams, I don't interact with anyone. I'll shout out when I get a chance and I go right back in and you feel a big disconnect. And today, I'm hoping to change that today to make it a more social stream. In fact, that's actually why I've taken Street Fighter and made it the daytime stream today. I want to test this out. I want to have time to do it. So I'm curious how this will work. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully it does work and people enjoy. And um, it ends up being a good time. All right. By the way, I'll just say this up front. For those who are here, some, uh, for those who are contributing, the way I run my podcast is I shout out all contributions that happen during the podcast near the end segment. So FYI, if you are contributing now, I will shout you out later in the show. I don't want anyone to feel like I'm ignoring them. I'm not. It's just I would like to get through my topics first so that way I don't forget or lose track of what I want to talk about that's important. And then we do a whole segment at the end of the show that's interaction, shout outs, Q&A, and the like. Okay? Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Can we talk more about how bad the competitor's mom is for winning? Yes, actually. I'm going to increase my, my insults about people's mothers. That is one thing that I'm committing to doing. I got more mom insults and jokes to use on today's stream. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, that's... The daytime streams for the foreseeable future are going to be a balance between Elden Ring DLC and Street Fighter VI, okay? Night streams are going to be chill gameplay. Starting tonight, I'm playing the Riven Remaster on my mini PC. Now, I have an update on this. That's not a very good update. It's pretty dumb. They changed the system requirements for the Riven Remaster. What? Yeah, they did. OP Boone had looked up the system requirements about two weeks ago, and he had told me, yeah, your mini PC it actually reaches the specs needed to play the game comfortably. You're good. You should be able to play it. I buy the game. I install it. Oh, they changed them now. Gee, thanks. However, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, and here's why. Hades 2 apparently had system requirements that my mini PC did not have. They didn't reach them. And it ran beautifully on my mini PC. No problems. So I get the feeling as long as I'm playing at 1080p, I don't think we're going to have an issue with the Riven Remaster. I think maybe if I was trying to play it at 4K or something, it would be, you know, a nightmare. But I think I'm going to be good. <clears throat> um, I think we'll be fine. Uh, anyway, and by the way, if I'm not, if it doesn't run, guess what? I bought regular Riven too. So I have the, I bought the bundle. That's the Riven Remaster and Original Riven. So worst case scenario, we'll just play Original Riven. But obviously, I would love to play the real remaked Riven that just came out last week. If we can do so, we'll find out. So tonight, on the late stream, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, it's Riven for the first time ever. I'm very excited for this. This is a game that's the sequel to Myst, which I played several years ago, and people really like that as a chill, interactive playthrough. I'm looking to approach Riven in exactly the same way. I know there'll be cryptic puzzles that... I'll be scratching my head about, and eventually I'll need your help to, to beat them. But I'm going to give it all an honest shot first before I start, you know, desperately asking for help. Um, it should be fun. I can't wait to explore. I haven't played a game like this in quite some time. So it's going to be a very neat late night interactive stream. People have actually asked for Riven for several years. Ever since I beat Mist, people were like, oh, well, you play Riven because we really like Mist. Well, it's come. We're going to do it. Okay? <clears throat> so that's tonight. Tomorrow is the continuation of Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. And tomorrow night, it's more Stardew Valley Late Night Chill. I'm not here on Wednesday this week, and I know that's weird because usually Thursday is my day off. But this week, I have multiple appointments I need to do on Wednesday. Plus, with Thursday being July 4th, it kind of makes sense to take my day off first so because, rather than on a holiday when half the stuff is closed or has weird hours and stuff like that. So I'm not here Wednesday. When I come back on Thursday, it'll be more Street Fighter Six and more Riven. And then Friday is going to be Elden Ring and Friday Night Fights. Yes, more Street Fighter VI. Saturday will again be more Elden Ring and, I believe, uh, Stardew Valley. And then, of course, Sunday's React Day. And then we go from there later on in the week. So that's what you can expect roughly this week. Yes, the days are shuffled around a bit. 
But we're going to have lots of content, lots of good stuff coming up. Uh, and I hope you guys will join me for. Okay, I'm hoping today with my new philosophy of M. Bison to get him to master rank. We might very well do it today. I'm only about a thousand points, not even away from hitting master. And then if I get him to master, obviously I want to do some matches in master level and see how I do. I feel like today, understanding Bison more is going to help a ton. Because previously, I didn't understand that, hey, when you have a mine on the enemy, you could just do unsafe stuff because you're protected. And it's actually bait for the enemy to fall for it. And you get extra hits, so you're taking down their guard meter more and everything. I didn't understand that before. Now I'm kind of getting it. And I'm happy that I'm kind of, it clicked last night. I was like, oh, okay. So everything I should do should try to combo into the hands. So they always have a mine on them. Do unsafe things to bait the enemy, right? With this mine, like that's what I should be doing. So let's see how it goes today. All right, if I get him to master, great. If not, no rush. But I feel like we're gonna get him to master likely this week because I, I I've been doing so well with him and because of this new philosophy I'm going to adopt when playing Street Fighter on these streams. Okay, good stuff. Now, what else will I be doing in July? Well, I've already stated once we basically kind of wrap up certain things. Let's say we beat Riven. Let's say. You know, we get to the end of the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC, or maybe we want to cut back a little bit on Street Fighter. Then we could swing in other things. We could bring back Fallout 4. Fallout 4 was almost done. All we had to do to, to finish the playthrough was the Nuka Cola DLC, the Automatron DLC, and the finale of the game, which would take like probably like an hour and a half, not even. You just go to the Institute, do free missions, and then you pick your ending and you're done. Um, so we were almost there. Maybe a few more streams and we were going to wrap up that playthrough. That's a possibility to bring back this month and finish. Um, there's playthroughs that I wanted to do that I've skipped. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door Remake, which is a game that I loved on GameCube but never finished. I would love to do that. Luigi's Mansion 2 Remake. I would love to play that. Um, <clears throat> the System Shock Remake. I would love to play that. So, there's various options. And we may do some polling. We may do something to try to figure out what we do during the month of July once the time permits for it. Okay? Um... So that's all exciting, and keep in mind that we had a few different ideas of other things we may try. You know, we talked about possibility of me doing like a late night chill stream where I build like a Lego set or do something else similar. We'll continue to talk about that, um, you know, over the month and try to figure out if we can maybe try that like a demo stream. But in addition to that, people seem to want a new event. And I would say the new event would either be like last week of July, first week of August, and it would be a marathon event that's like a summertime vibe, a summer party kind of style. And we already talked about possibility of maybe doing the Nintendo World Championships game and doing some challenge runs and classic games during that, that marathon. Maybe some Stardew Valley chill. Maybe a tier maker, which I haven't done since Christmas. So maybe actually do a tier maker that's like summertime themed or something like that. Some food, some booze, some chill vibes. Uh, all this would be fun for a marathon, I feel. So let's continue to talk about that over July. Solidify those ideas. And try to come up with exactly what we want to do. And then we can maybe set a date and start working on that. Okay? Six seventy two. I can't do an IRL grilling stream. Number one, I don't have a grill. Number two, I would not film outside of this office regardless. So there you go. I'm not going to grill in the office. Anyway. um, So that's all going on. All right? And then we'll, you know, as we get further into summertime, I'm sure we'll come up with more ideas and things and stuff that we want to do. But right now... Things are good. I want, I want to make this firmly clear to everyone. It is July 1st. We are officially halfway through 2024. Dude, this year has been great. Has it not? Even with the fact that there's been a drought of great high-profile AAA games, the stuff that I've done has worked. We've had fun hanging out with each other, having a good time. You know, yes, there was a little bit of a, a downturn there when I was playing Baldur's Gate 3 all the time, but as soon as that playthrough finished and I stopped RPG Overload, Attention came back. People are watching. People are engaging. People are supporting. People are liking the stuff. This is a good thing. I've been stayed completely out of drama this year. Literally, any drama is completely fabricated and false by, by my idiotic haters. It has nothing to do with me. So I just ignore it, and we're good. So everything this year has been absolutely great. I, I really have no complaints. I just want to keep it going this way for the rest of the year. And undoubtedly, if we can keep it going the rest of the year like this, when the new releases do actually hit that people are excited for, we're going to have a great level of entertainment value and uh, and exciting stuff, okay? So I will uh, keep going, man, positively. Thank you all. Now, last night, because I want to recap what we did yesterday. Yesterday was React Day, 
all right? DSP versus the internet had a hell of a lot of political content. I understand why, because we had presidential debates this week. I hope we don't have all politics next week because I don't want to make the whole show political. So therefore, next week, if there's a lot, I'm just going to end up vetoing a lot of it. Um, We'll see. But last night on DSP Throwback, it was the return of Dark Souls 1 to my retro our retro react streams where we react to previous playthroughs from my early days and it was really fun this time around i basically tackled the whole chapel area um where i was uh fighting all the enemies like the mage and the the, the minions in there i uh, i fought the guy who was the prisoner in the cell and that was a, a pretty fun fight pretty funny fight and then i fought the bell gargoyles so that was a good stream and here's what i need from you guys all right if you watch anything on DSP Throwback, right now I need feedback. Number one, <clears throat> I want to know what are the playthroughs that you want to see on that channel next because Fallout 3 is about to end. So what would you like to see remastered on that channel? You know, there's missing content. For example, Dante's Inferno unfinished playthrough. There's a lot of travel vlogs. Um, Red Dead Redemption online gameplay that we eventually turned into the Suicide King series. Among other things that are just not anywhere on the internet and we could put those on the channel or is there a classic game playthrough from back in the day from the dark side phil channel or from my early days of the camera pointed at the tv here on dsp gaming that you would like to see remastered upscaled better frames per second better resolution proper thumbnail proper title right would you like that like we just did it with fallout 3 we're doing it with other playthroughs. what else would you like to see so i need that feedback over on dsp throwback but in addition I want to know what other games you'd like to see for the retro replay stream. Excuse me, retro react streams. We're going to do Dark Souls at least for another week. The other ideas I have are possibly PS Home. Remember when I used to check that out and do periodic exploration of PS Home on the PS3? We could do that for a couple sessions. Um, I'm going to bring back Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games for the end of the month because the Olympics will really be going on in real life. What a pertinent time to be doing that, right? Then when it's actually happening in real life. Um... But in addition to that, uh, other ideas are coming up. People are saying, what about this? What about re classic Resident Evil playthroughs during the months of September, October, leading up to Halloween? Makes sense, right? So we have these ideas, but I need your feedback on DSP Throwback. I put up a special vlog last night. It was a 10-minute vlog, channel update, first six months of the year. Here's how the channel's done, and here's what I, I need information on. Please go over there and leave feedback on that video in the comments. I'm going to use the comments of that video as a way to feed off of and do things for the channel. So please head over there and do so. Right now, a few hundred people have watched it. It would be great if tons more could check it out and let me know what you want of that channel because I need guidance on what you need rather than me just keep picking, picking and not really knowing if that's what you guys want or not, okay? Okay. All right. So we covered the schedule. We covered... What's going on on my channels? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our favorite segment of the Level 1 podcast that we like to call DSP News. This morning, we have a variety of news to cover. Not a ton, but it is a variety of topics, so let's jump into it. First of all... Where, oh, there... I'm being stupid. First of all, I have an update in regards to a couple things on YouTube. First off, YouTube about a week and a half ago launched a new feature site-wide. This feature is the ability to put three different thumbnails on any given video that you upload to the site. What YouTube will do is run an experiment. Different people who watch that same video will randomly see one of the three thumbnails when they go to watch the video. So one person might see your face. Another person might see you angry. And another person might just see a thumbnail of the action of a game you're playing. All completely different kind of thumbnails. Okay? Based on what you assign. <clears throat> what YouTube will do is read data for about a week and a half on said video and say which thumbnail created more engagement with the video. Which thumbnail popped so much that people clicked and watched that video. All right? So I ran my own personal experiment with this new feature with part one of the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC right here on DSP Gaming. So for the record, that video as of this morning has 
almost 4,500 views in just over a week. It's my most viewed gameplay video in months. The last time I had that many views was actually the viral video of the Fallout 4 uh, redo playthrough that I started a few months ago. And that one got like 30,000 views because it hit the algorithm. Obviously, this vi video did not, okay? And there's nothing I can do about that. Um, but yeah, my most viewed video in months on the channel, okay? So, I ran the experiment, and there were three different thumbnails. Thumbnail number one was my old-style thumbnail, where on one side of the screen it said Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. Then it had a number in, like, this rectangular design. And on the left-hand, or the uh, right-hand side, it was actually, like, Mesmer sitting in a throne. So it had nothing to do with my gameplay whatsoever. It was just the generic art of the game and then the title and a number, okay? The second uh, thumbnail, all right, was the same design with Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, and the number one, but on the left hand, or the right hand side, it was my character doing the new ring emote like this in front of the bloomed uh, Mel Melania or Melania uh, Bloom after having beaten her as the last thing that I did in my second run. The third thumbnail, okay, <clears throat> was no rectangular design whatsoever. It was a big number one, Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC, and my character, again, doing the pose with no border whatsoever. It was borderless, so it kind of looked more stylized in that regard. So I ran this experiment, okay? Here are the results. Are you ready for this? The thumbnail that got the most engagement was... Drum roll, please. Absolutely none of them. They all got equal views. Literally every thumbnail on my video got the same amount of... It was pretty much one-third of the viewership for each thumbnail. So literally the thumbnail didn't affect my video in any way, shape, or fucking form. And this is hilarious to me. Because for years and years and years, people complain, Phil, you don't have thumbnails, and that's why you're behind the times. That's why you're not getting extra clicks and views. So then I started having thumbnails on my video. But then people started complaining, Phil, your thumbnails are outdated, they're too generic. So then this year, we updated the thumbnails to be more modernized, actually showing a scene from the game with the title and everything looking more, st more stylized. Literally, the thumbnail doesn't fucking affect the video in any way. <laughs> At all. Now, maybe if I had an audience of ADD-riddled children, like most top YouTubers do, let's be honest, right? The Mr. Beasts of YouTube who fucking are at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards? Yeah, maybe if they have a thumbnail where their face is like... on the fucking thumbnail constantly, maybe that gets small children to click on their videos, all right? First of all, I don't want small children clicking on my fucking videos. I don't want them anywhere near my channel. This is not a, a channel for children. This is a channel for people who like gameplay, who are of like mind of me. They like gaming as a hobby. They have a passion of theirs. They want to see a genuine person play a game, give their feedback, rage at the, the failures, but then revel in the successes, right? That's the point of this channel is genuine stuff, all right? But that's the point I've kind of been making all along, and a lot of people have always given me shit for. I'm different from everyone else. How people don't understand that, I mean, you have to be brain-dead stupid, but there are a lot of brain-dead stupid people out there who just insist that if I did absolutely everything exactly the same as everybody else, that I would blow up in popularity overnight and I'd have increased income and increased views. And the answer is wrong. <laughs> wrong. I'm just, I'm not that person. I'm not going to get any increase in anything. I have three completely different kind of thumbnails. And none of them affected the video performance whatsoever. Zero. Zero effect. So, I will possibly try in the future with other playthroughs. I'll try this again. I'm not going to do it for every video. I've, I've decided I'll, maybe I'll experiment with other new playthroughs moving forward, right? Like a new, a new game comes out that's hot. Part one, try three different thumbnails, see if anything happens. But for the most part, this is empirical evidence. It's not, these, this stuff is not a big deal when it comes to my audience. They're going to watch if they want to watch, and they're not going to watch if they don't. The thumbnail doesn't affect them at all. Keep in mind, my videos don't hit the YouTube algorithm that often. Maybe if part one hit the YouTube algorithm, we would have had a better, you know, uh, body of evidence or, or uh, statistics 
from a wider audience that normally doesn't watch my stuff, and that would have been more valid. But as for just my audience, it just doesn't matter. They don't really care, okay? <clears throat> but FYI, the ability is there for those who are uploading to YouTube to do this, and you can test it out for yourself. YouTube also this morning changed everyone's YouTube channels. Now, all the buttons look completely different. The create button is rounded. All your video th like thumbnails are rounded. Everything's rounded. And all the text was color changed. I don't know why they did this. It looks like a superficial change. It doesn't actually look like this is a change that affects much. But you might have noticed that. That all of a sudden, it looks a little different uh, on YouTube. It's just one of these other rollouts that they do. Um, I actually had this change happen to my throwback channel two weeks ago, and now it's now affected my React and the DSP Gaming channel. But again, I don't know if it's going to affect anything negatively. I hope not. I hope that they tested it. <laughs> oh, I made myself laugh there. I said, I hope that YouTube tested something before they launched it. I almost believed it for a second, but we all know that YouTube doesn't test anything. They just launch it. Okay. Anyway, you might notice some changes. Hopefully, everything still works. Um... Interesting thing happened this morning. So there is a YouTuber. I have no idea what kind of content they make. But they go by the name of Count Dankula. Okay? I don't know what they do on YouTube, but apparently they're big. They have a following. Good viewership or whatever. They made an interesting post on X this morning. And I wanted to talk about it because this is the experience that I get on YouTube as well. And I want you guys to understand what it's like trying to be a YouTuber. So, Count Dankula... Post up this on, on Twitter this morning. Uh, basically, he says, hello, everyone. I just, I just want everyone to know I've just been informed. If you say the word fucking, fucking, at any point in your video, even long after the one-minute mark, your entire video will now be demonetized. It's a new rule that they are rolling out because it used to be fine. Okay? Now, this person got so much attention on their tweet that Team YouTube on, on X actually directly responded to them. And they said the following. One effing clarification for you, on the, but they censored the word. That word only results in demonetization of content if you use it in the first seven seconds or if it's present in the title or thumbnail. I'm going to send you a DM, but here's more info, and they link to a Google article. To which Count Dankula directly responded, it was at the 55 minute mark of my video. I explained all of this to you. You said tough and you just gave me a canned response and kept the video demonetized. So for those who don't know, YouTube literally does not have any intelligent people that you can speak with about anything. They don't have a customer service department. Okay, what they have is called a partner help chat. If you are a YouTube partner of a certain stature, if your channel has a certain amount of subscribers, if you get a certain amount of views, if you've been around for a certain amount of time, you have access to a chat room, which you can talk to people on YouTube and try to get help. I'm, I can look at it right now. Here it is. Chat with a, a customer support agent right here. Okay. So you might say, well, wait a minute, customer support, that sounds like customer service. Well, you just said you can't talk to someone. You can't. Because if you click on that customer support icon, it opens up a chat with a person on the other side of the planet who barely understands English. And I wish that I was exaggerating when I said that. I'm not. This is not me being a bigot. I'm telling you the truth of my experience actually talking with people in that support chat. They basically can't understand English sentence structure. You'll try to tell them something and they'll have to like have you say it three more ways to even understand what you're saying. They basically can't understand shit. Okay. Then all that they do is they try to throw at you articles from the Google help page trying to explain how Google works or how YouTube works. They literally don't have the ability to help you in any way, shape, or form. And I'll give you an example. <clears throat> a couple years ago, 
I found a really big problem with YouTube. I actually found a weird bug or loophole that was allowing people to actually be incredibly malicious to people on YouTube with no way to stop it. This could actually create huge legal problems for YouTube if they allowed it to continue. I went to the customer or the support chat for partners. I explained the entire situation to them. They pushed back and told me this doesn't, this is not true that YouTube could not have this. They found no support articles to, to actually corroborate what I'm saying, nor do they believe that this could actually happen. Therefore, it must not be true. I said, but here's the evidence. And I showed them step by step the evidence of where it was and how it was taking place. And they still argued with me saying that I was wrong and I didn't know what I was talking about. Okay. Another time <clears throat> earlier this, this actual year, probably the first month or two months of this year, I again contacted them for a different issue entirely, explaining the entire issue. All right. They then sent me a help article that had nothing whatsoever to do with my issue. So again, I re-explained the issue, said, no, this is the issue, not what you're saying, to which they again sent me another help article that had nothing to do with my issue. I said, I want to talk to someone who has the ability to help me, to speak with someone at YouTube who is intelligent, who can comprehend what I'm saying so that we can get some intelligent response because you're not helping me. All you're doing is copy pasting articles that have nothing to do with what I'm talking to you about. You wanna know what the person said? They said, sir, please do not insult me. I said, I'm not insulting you. You are not understanding what I'm telling you. I've tried three times to explain it and you keep linking me to unrelated articles. You're not helping me. Please give me over to someone else who can. And then they just said no and they closed the whole chat. Okay, this is YouTube help. This is what they, they actually hired people across the globe who don't even understand English. They don't understand the basics of YouTube. All they're told to do is look for keywords and what you type in the chat and link articles and then close the chat. That's their support. So Count Dankula must have made a video where he said, you know, the F word, fucking, I can say it because I don't give a fuck about being demonetized, quite frankly. Um, and apparently he probably did a big video. You know, it's not like me. Me, I upload a ton of videos a day, right? I got a podcast. I got multiple gameplay videos. If a video or two gets demonetized in a day for me, it's not the fucking end of the world. I move on and I'm like, big deal, right? I put out enough content. It's not a big deal. But a lot of these YouTubers don't do what I do. What they do is they put out highly edited videos, right? That are targeted content for a certain audience, right? And if that video gets demonetized, they make no money today. They make no money for several days, right? Like think of these YouTubers that are not live streamers, but they just put out these edited videos. If their giant project gets demonetized, they don't make any money on their work, right? This actually was a huge problem for Angry Joe uh, many years ago. He started coming out and saying, I don't know what's going on. YouTube keeps demonetizing all my reviews. My reviews are my bread and butter. So if I don't make money on my reviews. I can't make a living. This is ridiculous. Why do they keep demonetizing me? And YouTube would just give him these form letter responses and never tell him why he really got demonetized. In truth, okay? In truth, the DSP throwback channel has this problem every single day. Every single day. Last night I did a stream, Retro Replay Dark Souls. I uploaded five videos. Of those five videos, three were flagged as ad unsuitable. So what I did is I submitted them for review and now they've all been approved for ads. But the, the algorithm on YouTube doesn't work. The algorithm on YouTube has never worked. It's a faulty algorithm that constantly flags videos for demonetization. And then you have to say to YouTube, no, you're wrong. Have an intelligent person look at this, not an AI bot that is dumb. And then sometimes you get ads on the video and sometimes you don't, all right? In this case, what Count Dankula is saying is their video got demonetized. They did put it up for, you know, review. It still said no demonetized. So then he went and talked to the YouTube chat agent and the chat agent told him that the moment in question was 55 minutes into his video and that they were not going to monetize it and they closed the case. So he goes on social media 
and explains to everyone YouTube is doing this to YouTubers. And their social media team countered and said, oh, no, we only do that if it's in the first seven minutes. To which he says, no, you don't. You don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. And this is the problem with a company like YouTube, where they just rely completely on automation or uninformed employees who are paid probably pennies on the dollar of what they would be paid if they were actual Americans who understood how YouTube works or even understood basic English language structure. And again, I'm trying to, un to explain to you, this is not me being bigoted or prejudiced. This is my experience that they don't even understand what you're saying to them in an English sentence. Their, their brain just baffled. They can't understand what the statement of what you're saying. They don't even know basic things about YouTube. They don't understand what a sentence means when you type it out. They're just like, duh. So they just start posting fucking art, you know, articles in the fucking chat. And what are you doing? You're literally posting unrelated articles to what I'm trying to tell you. I just, why are you, oh, here's my question. Why are they even employing these people? Why? Why employ people who don't understand the people who they're trying to help? It doesn't even make sense. You're employing people across the globe who don't have any kind of education about how YouTube works or even how to communicate. So why are you hiring them? Just don't have it then. I'd literally rather have no chat than a chat that's worthless. You see? The chat used to be different. There actually used to be people in that chat many years ago who were smart and who could understand what you were saying and would try to help you. That was like five to seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. So it is what it is. I mean, this is not shocking to me that Count Dankula is having this experience where one part of YouTube is insisting, no, this is our policy, but then the other part of YouTube said, oh, no, we're just going to demonetize you anyway, and there's no one to have a ruling on the issue and no one intelligent who will even speak with it. Just a bunch of fucking people who are just form letter spammers, right? It's trash. It really does, you know? Anyway, I feel for Count Dankula in this situation. You know, I've been through it. Thankfully for me, I don't get affected by it that much because, again, I don't post up ginormous videos where this is my big video for the month and I hope it gets good views because this is where my revenue is coming from. I'm not that kind of content creator. I never was. So thankfully for me, even with the rampant demonetization, with issues, with all this kind of stuff, you know, content ID claims up the butt on ver various content, I'm still okay. But other people are massively affected by this on a daily basis. It should be fixed. YouTube doesn't care. So anyway, FYI, just another messed up part of YouTube on another day. What a big shocker, right? Now let's get to some other interesting news. This morning, it, the news broke that Capcom has acquired majority ownership of a Taiwan-based game animation producer. The name of the company is called Minimum Studios. They actually had previously done animation work on games such as Dragon's Dogma 2, Resident Evil Village, and the Resident Evil 4 Remake. Okay, so they've already done work for Capcom, but Capcom liked their work so much that they actually hired them. That's cool. Um, I don't know if this means that there's going to be more animations <laughs> in games. Like, I don't even know what it really means. Minimum Studios is the name of the company. Uh, like, when they say animation producer, do they mean it was, like, cutscenes? I don't know what, what, what cutscenes exactly they're talking about. That's what I'm a little confused about. Um... Maybe they're talking about the hand-drawn art, not the actual animation with the 3D models, but the hand-drawn art that was in some of those games. I don't know. Anyway, hey, more, more better that... More better, but that doesn't sound right. Uh, better off that they hire the company, and now the company can do full-time work for them. Capcom is one of the companies that has not been laying off people recently, but instead they've been reporting big profits and success. So I wish them more power to hire more people and give them more jobs. Okay? Uh, Sega has confirmed a rumor. Finally, we have some information. Yes, they are making a new Crazy Taxi game. How crazy is that? Because we haven't seen Crazy Taxi in, what, 20 years? But get this. Just listen to this. The new Crazy Taxi game is going to be an open-world, multiplayer, AAA game. Huh? So the idea is you're going to be in an open world giant city driving around a taxi 
while other people are also driving taxis around, all competing for the same fares? Could it, someone just said it. Burninator says, so is it like Forza? Like Forza Horizon? Maybe it's like Forza Horizon, right? Where it's a giant open world map and you drive around doing missions, doing challenges. Like I could see that. I could see like crazy taxi world, they would call it. And it would be like driving around doing missions like that, but then you compete, you race, you compete for fares against others. I could see that. Um, how well would that work? I don't know. I loved Crazy Taxi back in the day. Like, no exaggeration. I thought it was a super fun game. Um, I, for one, would like a new modern Crazy Taxi game. I, I just hope that it would work in the modern era and it wouldn't just be like a relic where everyone would say that it plays outdated because, oh, you know, it's an older game. And maybe making it this model. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how this is going to work. So anyway, that's interesting news. No information about the game itself, like no pictures, no no gameplay. But they did, I guess because there was a strong rumor about it, and people sounded excited about it, that Sega wanted to come out and actually confirm that it was real. Okay. All right, last story. Now, this is by far, to me, this is the best story of the day. To me, this is a pretty badass story. Okay, it's a good one. It's a positive one, okay? Nintendo president, Shuntaro Furukawa, has come out and publicly said, so here's what we're going to do in regards to the Switch 2 when it comes out, all right? Which hasn't even been formally announced yet or anything like that. He says, so you remember when the Switch came out, and you remember when the PlayStation 5 came out, and you remember when the Xbox Series S and X came out. The problem was there was not enough supply to give into the demand, and we had scalping, rampant scalping across the world. People were going on eBay and selling these things for two, three times the actual value. People were getting ripped off. People were using bots to go online and buy thousands of the fucking things, right? <clears throat> so when he was asked, how will Nintendo combat the scalping and the rampant problems that happened with the last three consoles? He very matter-of-factly said, we're going to make so many of these. They're going to be so readily available to the world. There's no possible way anyone's going to be able to scalp them. <laughs> wow. Now that is a badass answer. That's a crazy good answer. He basically says there is no more semiconductor shortage. Nintendo has rampant access to semiconductors. Unlike during COVID when all this happened with the other consoles. There's no problem. They are going to massively produce the Switch 2 at such a rate that no one would ever not be able to get one. That's, that is like the most crazy badass answer from any CEO of any tech company. Fuck the problems. We're just going to mass produce this fucker so much. You're going to see Switch 2s stacked to the ceiling. You're going to open your front door and there's going to be Switch 2 boxes rolling down the street because they're bursting through the doors of inventory and the, the buildings won't be able to hold them. The delivery trucks will be pouring them all over the fucking neighborhood. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now, is it true is the question. Listen, I would love to have a Switch 2 on launch day. I would love to unbox it with you guys, plug it in, test it out. I did that with the Switch 1 and it bricked. Do you remember that? The Switch 1 arrived at my house. I had it mail ordered. It showed up. I hooked it up the night before that I was going to stream it. We, we played with it for like a, an hour. It was fun. I said, okay, tomorrow we start Zelda. The next day I went to turn it on and it was bricked. And then I couldn't get another one for like a month because they weren't anywhere. Luckily, a fan was able to order one for me from another part of the world and ship it to me. And so I, <laughs> so I had a Switch as a result of that. But yeah, so now... Would I, I mean, I would love to have a Switch 2 at launch and see what launch. You know they're going to have great first-party launch titles for the system at launch. They always do. They, they had Zelda for the Switch. So they're going to have something good, right? The question is, when's it coming out? What are the stats? What's the cost? What are the games? But I'm down for that. And it, listen, if we go back to the days where everyone could get one, that'd be amazing. Like, literally, it used to be you could just get consoles whenever you wanted. There was no problem. Then all of a sudden, the scarcity thing fucking started happening. And it's like, damn, now you can't fucking get it for like two years? What's going on? So, hope for the best. I'm down for that. That's a badass answer. And kudos to Mr. Furukawa for that answer. 
Now let's hope that he can actually live up to that promise because the worst would be if he over promises and under delivers and then he can't actually provide the consoles that he promised. Uh, let's hope that there's no more crazy world pandemics or semiconductor shortages for some reason. Okay. Okay, guys, that's the news for today. So now we're going to head into my segment of the show where I do shout outs. So for those who contributed now, thank you. Now we get to the show. I will, I will re uh, address the stuff that you guys said. DJ Sonic Swag says he's going off to work. I'll see you, I'll see you later, DJ Sonic. DJ Sonic did a bunch of super chats this morning that I'm about to read out. Sadly, he's going to miss the responses, but you can always watch it on demand after. Thank you, sir. All right, so here we go. On the YouTube side of stuff to start off today, our first contribution came in from Michael Johan. And he says, hey, Phil, I loved your tribute to uh, Super Blind Man. I'm a blind gamer myself, and I'm never going to forget the work that he did. Me either. Amazing man. He's going to be well missed. You know, I did a five-minute tribute to him on this channel a couple days ago. Check it out if you want. It's fully demonetized. And uh, I felt I, I hope to try to do him justice in that video because he's a great person. Going to be missed. Uh, Mr. I Gamer became a member this morning. Thank you, Mr. I Gamer, for that. Uh, Michael did another super chat, a follow-up one. He says, would you go back to Mortal Kombat 1? I'm going to be honest with you, Michael. I don't like Mortal Kombat 1. All right? I actually like the Mortal Kombat trilogy of games that came before that. Um, 9, 10, and 11 way more than one with one the graphics are pretty much the only thing they improved the gameplay mechanics they completely dumbed down to just be like a high low mix-up game with assists thrown in there for extended combos it's not very fun to play the online connectivity is atrocious it is the worst of the big three fighters right now it's so slow and buggy and and, and just fucking delayed um it's really hard to enjoy and then on top of that it pretty much has not very good offline features either the story mode was not very good. The story was bad. And the other mode that's like a board game, it's okay, but it's not as fun as the crypt that they used to do. So it's like every single thing in the game was worse except graphics. So after having played it, I, after a couple of weeks, I just didn't want to play it anymore. Uh, you know, it just it annoyed me. And I'm disappointed by that. I like Mortal Kombat, and I'm very disappointed that that's what they did with the series. It really felt to me like a game that was dialed in, meaning they didn't feel like putting as much effort into this one. It almost feels like this should have been a different game. Like, for example, this would have been the time when they're alternating between Injustice and Mortal Kombat. It feels like they should have had a new a new game of Injustice or something different in between. But instead, they just pumped out another Mortal Kombat that just is bleh. So, yeah, and, and what's funny is I bought the whole season pass for it. I played zero of the DLC characters. I don't give a shit. So I don't care about Omni-Man. I don't care about fucking Homelander. I don't care about any of it. Because the game stinks. So I don't want to play those characters. I don't ever want to play the game again. It's just sad that after having played Mortal Kombat 1 for a week, every time I picked up the game, I literally wanted to be playing Street Fighter 6. So there you go. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Michael, for those super chats this morning. DJ Sonic Swag went on a big, crazy marathon of super chats. The first one, he says... Do not remaster your Dante's Inferno unless you want to over-censor the screen due to the sound effects and exposed limbs. Now, for those of you who've never played the Dante's Inferno video game from many years ago, Dante's Inferno, first of all, was a blatant attempt to make a game that played like the older God of Wars. Not the newer ones that reimagined the series, but the older ones. The fixed camera angles. The combat that's kind of like top-down, but a lot of action-based. Use different weapons and combos, kind of Devil May Cry-esque, stuff like that. Only D Dante's Inferno absolutely pushes it to the extreme. Insane amounts of gore, okay? Way over the top. Nudity. And what I mean by that is it's supposed to be going to the seven levels of hell. I think like stage two is like lust. And no exaggeration. The entire level is like dicks and boobs. I wish that was a joke. No, it's actually like big penises and breasts exposed. Now, <laughs> when I played this back in the day, okay, it was a different time for YouTube. What do I mean by that? Number one, you couldn't even monetize gameplay. That's how old this game is. It's like from like, like early 2010. You couldn't monetize gameplay back then anyway. So it wasn't like, oh, ads disabled on this video. There were no ads to enable. You couldn't monetize anyone's game uh, footage at all. When I tried to play this game and simply upload it to my, my channel, YouTube denied all the videos, essentially saying, this violates our community guidelines. Now, I want you to think about this. 
virtual nudity, which isn't real. It's not sexual content. It's just nudity. It's more gore than anything else. You know, these bodies are being torn apart by, by Dante's weapons as he goes through the levels of hell and stuff. It's not meant to be sexualized content. There's no actual sexual intercourse or anything going on in this game. It's just horror. It's like hor body horror is basically what it is. Um, so YouTube didn't want it back then. All right. So I tried uploading it to other sites. I think I tried like Daily Motion and another one. They all sucked back then. There was like no viable alternative to YouTube. So basically, the playthrough never happened. It literally just I it never went anywhere. It never got it got removed, and I never uploaded it anywhere. Now I never finished the game. I think if I remember correctly, I did the intro, the first level, the second level, and I think I was amidst somewhere like in the third level of the game. So I was probably a few hours in, maybe three, four, five hours in. I'm not sure. And, th and that's when I noticed I couldn't upload to YouTube. And I said, well, I'm not going to keep playing a game that I can't upload. What's the point? And I stopped and I never went back to it. But that playthrough, at least the parts that I made, have been completely lost to time. And so I said, as my next project on DSP Throwback, I think what I want to do is restore forgotten videos that are nowhere on the internet. Like most of these videos, I never even uploaded because YouTube wouldn't accept them. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the thing is, today YouTube is very different. Today, YouTube allows all of that content, but if it deems it basically um, unfit for you know all audiences, all they do is they'll demonetize the video. So first of all, you can't put ads on it. And then if they deem it too adult oriented, they'll flag it to say, this is an 18 plus video now. You have to have an account on YouTube that registers and says that you're 18 years old to watch. Worst case scenario, if that happens, so I don't make money on those videos, I I'm not too upset. I literally make $2 a day on DSP Throwback as it is. So if I go down to making $1.50 a day because I'm doing the Dante's Inferno playthrough, I don't think that's going to kill my budget. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not making much on that channel as it is. I don't foresee the channel being struck with problems. All that they're going to do is demonetize and flag. They're not going to, there's nothing there that's like awful, uh, over-the-top, it's not NC-17 content, do you understand? It's not. It's just way adult content. And again, YouTube was a different place back in like 20, 2009, 2010. They didn't have guidelines. They couldn't monetize gameplay. They just didn't like a lot of stuff. This was content they didn't want. Now they allow it all. In fact, there's full playthroughs of Dante's Inferno on YouTube literally right now. So I would be okay. You don't have to worry about that, DJ Sonic Swag. Then DJ Sonic Swag did another, play, another super chat. I meant to say your Dante's Inferno playthrough. I know, I know what you meant. Then he did another super chat and he says, This reminds me of when Markiplier do when to war with this issue. Are you saying that Markiplier basically fought YouTube on the whole demonetization issue at some point too? Again, I'm not surprised, but I don't think YouTube doesn't give a shit about anyone. They just want to automate their whole site and pay as little as possible to make it run and think that that's a valid business solution when it's not. They just don't care, right? Okay, um, and the DJ Sonic Swag did another super chat. Says, "Sorry for the typos. You don't have to apologize for typos." And then he did a final super chat saying, "Peace out. I'm off to work." Thank you for the super chat this morning, DJ Sonic Swag. And then still Splinter just did a two euro super chat and asked, "What are some of your favorite launch titles?" Oh man! Now, when you say that, do you mean as of recently, or do you mean of all time? If you mean of all time. I have one launch title that I don't believe will ever be beaten. There is one video game that came out at the launch of a console that is, was so good at that time, okay, <clears throat> that there's absolutely no way that another game will ever, top, ever topple it, in my opinion. You can disagree. Does anyone know what that game would be? Anyone have any clue what that game could possibly be? We got some guesses. Street Fighter 2? No, Street Fighter 2 was never a launch title. Super Mario 64. That's a very good guess, actually. That's a really, really, really good guess. And in fact, I would say, for some people, that is it. And so I will acknowledge that as a correct answer. However, for me, my answer has to be with my favorite console of all time. The answer is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. That game 
monstrously advanced upon the formula of what platformers were at the time. Better graphics, better music, way more levels, way more advanced gameplay with what you could do with power-ups, flying, secret exits leading to secret areas, epic boss encounters. Like, everything about that game monstrously pushed forward and advanced on what other platformers had done at the time. And it was a launch title that came with the console. If you bought a Super Nintendo, you had Super Mario World. No one had to go just buy the game. It came with the console. Okay? So, yeah, that's my answer. For sure, Still Splinter. Thank you, Still Splinter, for that super chat. Okay, so guys, we have a little bit of time left on the show. If you could... Tag me in the chat if you want to talk about anything. Ask me a question. We'll do some Q&A. If any other contributions come in, I will shout them out. Um, as you know, my goals for my stream is to hit 50 bucks in tips by the end of the stream. We're not even into the gameplay yet, so having no tips is not a big deal at this point. But anything is greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance, guys. And by the way, <clears throat> of course, today, if we hit the Tier 2 tips goal of $100, it is definitely time for the M. Bison hat considering I'm playing with M. Bison all day long in Street Fighter, okay? M. Bison hat for Master Bison, hopefully today. We'll see. Cool. Amnesiac Aaron says, Super Mario World playthrough in the dead time later this year. Did I ever do a solo Super Mario World playthrough? I did a co-op one many, many years ago with John Rambo. I don't. I think I did a solo one already. I'm almost positive that I did. So if that's the case, probably not. Let me just double check that. But I'm almost positive that I did. On. I have three pages of videos to go through. Yes. I played Super Mario World in December of 2019 when it was released on the Nintendo Switch. I did it as a, a, a like a chill late night stream deal with full face cam. So the answer is no. I will not be doing another playthrough of it. I've already done it. You can watch that one. And there's so there's two playthroughs that I've done of it so far. There's the one I did co-op originally with Rambo over a decade ago. And then there's the more modern one in 2019. <clears throat> so there you go. How many versions of Animal Crossing do I own? One. Just uh New Horizons on Switch. That's it. I don't I never that was my first Animal Crossing I ever played. And there hasn't been one since. So I've only played the one. I received a dollar tip. Bill, what about playing the Saboteur? It's a GTA like gameplay game. It came out in 2009. On PC, it plays well without any issues. It's free on PC Game Pass through the EA account. I don't know about that game. The Saboteur, does anyone know about it? I don't, I don't recall anyone ever bringing that up before today. Which is weird because you guys have asked me to play like every GTA spinoff style game. Uh, but I've never heard of this one, the Saboteur. I, I'd be down for that if it's available and it plays well. And, you know, you guys think you might want to see it. Maybe, right? Any confident contenders for Game of the Year so far? No, not really. For me, this has been the most underwhelming year for game releases probably since I've covered games in the first six months. All the big AAA releases you thought were going to be shoe-ins for Game of the Year didn't do so well. I would, I mean, going through, I would say Tekken 8 was outstanding for a fighting game. Super duper good. I actually really like Another Crab's Treasure. I think that's a great game. And Shadow of the Erd Tree is a really, really good DLC. But outside of that... I can't think of other games that blew me away this year whatsoever. I think all the games are going to be backloaded into the second half of the year. Oh, let's see here. Any plans for future co-op stuff right now? Not really working on that. Eventually, I'll, I'll get around to try to replanning the co-op. I was going to do it with my wife, but it's just not happening right now, FYI. Um, 
down the line, perhaps I will do more, more stuff with, uh, with Brian, like with Street Fighter. It's up to him if he feels like doing it or not. Um, we'll see. But uh, right now, no, there's really no plans on any of that stuff right now. Jade says, remember to, to not get mad and chill today. Yes, so Jade, yes, this is what we're doing. This is the new approach to Street Fighter, is that I'm going to be playing only around three sets. So play three different people. And then after the end of those sets, um, relax, okay? And, uh, and after that, after relaxing, doing like a five-minute break, talking with you guys, shouting out contributions, having a little conversation about those matches we just played, then go back. Hopefully by taking those five-minute breaks every two, three sets, it's going to allow me to calm down, and the stream will be a lot more interactive and social. It'll be us talking and hanging out, as I'm also ranking up and playing with Bison, rather than just being like, play, 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 and ignoring you guys and getting too heated, I want it to be a more laid-back experience. And I think it'll be better that way as a day stream. At night, I always feel pressured for time. Like, I don't know how much I'm going to get done in a night stream. With a day stream with three-plus hours to play, I think it's going to feel way more laid-back and relaxed, and it's going to work better. So I'm hoping for the best, and I hope that's what happens today. Uh, Dab Hands said, the saboteur, I played it back on the Xbox 360. Uh, it was amazing. You're an Irish spy type character, <clears throat> stopping Nazis in World War II France. Really? And it, but it plays like GTA? How is that possible, right? Am I super sure I'm not replaying Fallout 3 this year? As long as Fallout 3 is not getting some kind of a remaster this year, I'm not playing it this year. No. I'm we're doing Fallout 4. I want to finish Fallout 4, and that's enough Bethesda for me for one year. <clears throat> What's the worst platformer I ever played? I don't know, Zombie Wolf Packs. Back in the 90s, you know, you would rent a bunch of games from game rental stores and Blockbuster, and some of them were really shitty. But the thing is, you don't remember the shitty ones. There were a dime a dozen. There were tons of them. So, for me, I don't recall. I don't know. Am I still interested in doing Lego streams? Yes, I said that earlier on the show, that we should continue that discussion of possibly having, like, like chill nights doing other things than gaming. Like, maybe building Legos could be one of them. I think that would be kind of neat. Dabian says, it is GTA in the sense it's open world. You accept missions and you go do them the same concept. Okay. Jade says, I do not love Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, I do play the Mortal Kombat 1 tag game. I buy the ultimate one. I don't care about the DLC. I'm not like all MK3 guys. Oh, what you're saying is you don't really care about the DLC characters, right? He says, you, yeah, he's like, three superhero show guys? Yeah, I mean, the, with the thing with, with Mortal Kombat, I mean, you, you want to see an indication that a franchise knows that it's not as good as its competitors is when all of a sudden it starts bringing in these weird pop culture DLC characters that have nothing to do with the game, right? Listen, is it a neat thing that you got Omni-Man and you got Homelander in Mortal Kombat 1? Yeah, I guess. What the fuck does that have to do with Mortal Kombat? You have missing characters from the critical or the uh, core roster of Mortal Kombat, not in Mortal Kombat 1, but instead you're bringing in weird cartoon and comic book characters like, what are you doing, right? That just shows they know all the attention on their game fizzles out in a few months, and the only reason people go back to it and talk about it is because they have a weird outsider character showing up. So, <laughs> so there you go. It's like the Mafia games. Okay, that makes sense. I understand. So I now I know what you mean. Sandbox-style gameplay, but set in World War II. Okay, that makes sense. Theodore says the worst platformer he ever played was Bubsy 3D for the PS1. I never played any Bubsy game, actually. I never played any of the 2D or 3D Bubsies. I knew they existed. I saw ads for them everywhere, but I just wasn't very interested in them. During that era, like, on PS1, I was into, obviously, all the Street Fighter stuff. I had Resident Evil. I had, I like that game Reloaded. You ever played that one, Reloaded? I liked that top-down shooter game. Um... I love Brave, uh, all the RPGs, Sweek It In, Wild Arms, that kind of stuff. Um, oh, Brave Fencer Musashi. I thought that game was great. Everyone ever play that? That game was super good. Um, the thing was, 
that there was so many games available for PlayStation of so many varieties. Like, that was so good for me. I didn't really care about platformers anymore. Like, I, I felt like platformers were old-style games. Like, you wanted to play the classic platformers, Super Mario World, you play them. But I felt like at that point in the evolution of gaming, platforming just kind of self seemed outdated to me. Like, you wanted to do different kinds of gameplay than the platforming that you'd probably been doing the entire previous console gen. So for me, I really, I didn't play platformers during that PS1 era. Um, <clears throat> and so I'd probably missed out on a ton. I know there are probably a ton of good ones, and I didn't touch any of them, basically. I just skipped them all. Uh, what's up, Game Boy? Good to see you here today. Oh, let's see here. I received a dollar tip. The saboteur does have some nudity. You can turn that off in settings. I'm a 15-year fan of yours. I know that you would love this style of game. Okay. Well, I think it's kind of silly. If there's a game about being someone sabotaging the Nazis in World War I, World War II, why is there, uh, why is there nudity? <laughs> what? Uh, that's a little bizarre. I mean, it sounds like they were trying a little bit too hard to be like GTA, right? Did I ever play Rayman? The original Rayman game I played on PC. I never bought it. It came with a piece of PC equipment that I bought at some point. You know, back then you would buy a graphics card. You would buy a, a motherboard. They would come with games. Oddly enough, I don't know why, but they would. They would come bundled with games. And I remember I had Rayman on PC. I played it for a bit. I actually liked the graphics of it, but it was very difficult. And I didn't have like, you know, there was no controller for PC that, that would work very well back in the 90s. So I tried playing it on keyboard, and, and uh, it didn't work too well on keyboard, to be frank. Like, it was hard to control. So I never really got too far in it. But I did like the music and the graphics of it. Oh, uh, let's see here. I'm good, Iron Man the Power. Thank you for asking. AMS asks, would you ever be interested in playing old retro games on the throwback channel as a change from the React style? Still throwback, but hit up old school Mario 64, etc. The thing is, if I were to do that, I would want to do stuff that I haven't already done before. I've already played all those. I played Mario 64. I played Ocarina of Time. I played the classic Mario games. I've done, I kind of did that, been here, done that. If I was going to do something there, it would be something special. Like, for example, maybe I would do a retro marathon one day where I play through a bunch of old retro games. Like, maybe the classic Mega Mans or something like that in a marathon setting would be kind of neat. Um, so it would be like the DSP throwback Mega Marathon, something like that. That would be kind of cool, I think. Do a special event over there. Yeah, maybe something like that. Um, so I'll have to think about it. It's, it, I mean, yes, people have asked what I do gameplay on DSP throwback. I'm like, yeah, but it would have to be old school games or whatever, you know, so that way it kind of makes sense with the vibe of the channel. But, you know, I have to take a time away from doing my other stuff if I do that. So let's see. Maybe we will find some time this summer. We'll, we'll think about it. It's a good, it's a, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. Um, all right, dab hands. Well, I see now that's pretty stupid. Uh, replay Silent Hill 1? I would have to find a way to do that. How could I possibly replay Silent Hill 1 when they never remade it, right? They never remade the game. And you could only play it currently on the emulated PS1 that's available only on PS3 consoles, and I don't have a working PS3, nor am I going to buy another one now. So, I don't really have access to Silent Hill 1. I would like to replay it again someday. I've only played it once, right? Goldfish says GPUs still come with games, but modernized. Like if you bought an NVIDIA GPU and downloaded GeForce Experience, you get Game Pass for free for 90 days. I see. <clears throat> Sir Lugo says, would you be interested in playing old Valve games like Half-Life 1 on the mini PC? I know you played back Mesa back in the day, but you never played the original Half-Life. Would you guys want to see me play the original Half-Life on the mini PC? This is Hey, I'm down for stuff like that, but no one really ever asks for it. You know, if people were interested in seeing me play throwback games like that, I mean, sure, why wouldn't I? I like experiencing gaming history. It's fascinating to me. Even if I suck at the games, it's still fun to try and watch and play, right? So, you know, I'm down for that if people want it, but I don't really get demand for that old kind of stuff. <clears throat> Jade says, I see your Street Fighter shirt is on today. Of course. When I'm going to, when I'm, Getting serious with this guy right here. I gotta wear an appropriate shirt. <laughs> there you go. The original Half Life is really fun. Cool.
Badge of Honor, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Just the fact that you grouped me in with Wings of Redemption in your question means it's something that I'm not interested in. So I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> no, I never played Sam and Max. I never played any Sam and Max game at all. I know that they had older games and then they had a newer one. I've never played a Sam and Max game. <laughs> Okay, I literally just said I'm not interested, and you continue to persist, so now you can leave the chat. In my time. Game Boy. Would I do another playthrough of Dark Souls 2 after the Elden Ring DLC? No. Would I play another playthrough of Dark Souls 2 at some point? Yes. Would I do it now? Uh, no. Absolutely not. <clears throat> I'd have to wait. It's... There is such a thing. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing in a short period of time. I just played the Elden Ring second run. I played another Crab's Treasure. Now we're doing Shadow of the Erd Tree. The last thing I need is when I beat Shadow of the Erd Tree to then go right into another Souls playthrough. That's just too much. That's just way too much. <laughs> That's correct. This is the year of avoiding drama. I have no interest or concern about anything anyone has to say about me. I don't give two shits. I'm here to have fun with you guys every day. You guys show up. You hang out. We have a great time together. That's all I care about. I don't care about what all the white noises from all these nobodies outside of my content who want to talk shit about me. I don't care. I never heard of these people. They don't concern me in any way, shape, or form. I'll be here long after them anyway. So <laughs> I don't give a shit about them. <laughs> No, I, he actually just came back with a sock account. I've never heard of the person you're talking about. I literally have no idea what you're talking about. Goodbye. And if you continue to come back, I'll just keep banning you. Waste everyone's time here. <laughs> when I consider go back, going back to multiverses when they add ranked, I don't know. I liked multiverses. You guys told me to stop playing it after two segments. I did two streams of it, and you guys were so, oh, this game sucks. It's not as good as Smash. It's boring. So I stopped. You know, like, why would I continue to play a game that you guys outright told me to not play? So, I enjoyed it. You said no. So, I stopped. If there's some desire later to go back, maybe I would go back. The thing is, now, of course, everyone's been playing it for, what, a month? A, a month and a half? So, now they'll all be better than me. They're all going to know way more than me how to play it. You know, I was playing it when it came back, and so there was a chance to get in on ground level with everybody else. You know what I mean? Uh, but now, now I'm away from it for a month and a half, playing Street Fighter way more heavily. So, I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> okay. Last chance to tag me in the chat or a contribution if uh, you would like uh, a shout-out or talk a little bit about something here, Q&A, before we uh, end the show and then I get ready for Street Fighter. Have I seen the new Super Monkey Ball from the Nintendo Direct? I heard it's extremely good from a lot of people, said Hobo Wax. Uh, yeah, we talked about it, and I said that I was interested in it if people wanted it. I don't actually remember when it came out. I think it already came out, right? It's a possibility for the summer, if that's what people are interested in it. Leonara says, when you say you guys talking about stopping a game or something, what do you use to judge that? The stream. I streamed multiverses twice, okay? Each time that I streamed it, halfway through the stream, the stream chat started complaining they were bored, viewership dipped, engagement dipped, support slowed down. One of those multiverses streams, I had support on the podcast and literally zero contributions the entire stream until the very last minute when one person tipped because they got kind of felt bad, <laughs> right? And people were constantly complaining it was boring and they wanted me to do something else. That's how I judge it, by people who are actually on the stream, you know, and the, the views. Oh, God, the views on those videos, it was two, three days, and they didn't even have 300 views on them. So no one cared about the game and my content. Weird, because I think the game's quite sound and fun, and I was learning and everything, but people didn't seem to give a shit. 
So if you don't give a shit, then I'm not going to give a shit. You know, it's not, this is not me putting out content for me. I could just turn the camera and the stream off and play games offline if I want. I'm making content for you. So if you're telling me you don't like it, then that's that, right? <clears throat> yes, Super Monkey Ball is a rage-inducing game. That is correct. <laughs> It definitely is. <clears throat> I remember from the one that I played, oh my god, it was so rage-inducing. Do you remember how, how annoying that fucking game was? Oh my god. It was driving me nuts. <clears throat> oh, oh, ooh. oh, man. Oh, good stretch. Ooh. Oh, good stretch. Okay. Are we good, guys? Because people have stopped tagging me in the chat now. Are we good to end the, the show? And then start getting set up for Street Fighter? There, there's people who are really good at Super Monkey Ball who speedrun it. I mean, I believe that. I think there's people who are good at every game who speed. <laughs> Do I think I could play a Looney Tunes game for the retro event? What Looney Tunes game? What are you talking about? Well, I'd be playing Terry Bogard. New game when it comes out. Oh, you mean the new Fatal Fury game? I'm on the fence about that. I don't know. Um, excuse me. I like Fatal Fury, but when I play these SNK games like King of Fighters, nobody cares. Um, I don't know if Fatal Fury will be any better than King of Fighters. I hope it will be. Garu, I think Garu Mark of the Wolves actually is better than current King of Fighters, and that's a 20-year-old game. <clears throat> but I guess we'll have to see when it comes out. I'll have, have more of an idea about what the game is and decide if I want to try it or not. Delta Kubo says, is Delhi Premonition a possibility for throwback? If you mean retro re reacting, no. Uh, Delhi Premonition was direct capture live stream. The, the stuff we're doing on throwback right now is solely stuff that was camera. Stuff that was before 2013, camera pointed at TV style, taking those playthroughs, upgrading them to modern visuals. If we're going to do a remastered playthrough or if we're going to react to it, I want it to be that older style as well. It, what's the point of me reacting to something from the last 10 years that doesn't feel retro, right? Like, I don't think Deadly Premonition feels retro. <clears throat> it's good to have you here, J Jade. Thanks for being on the stream. Do the spiders in Elden Ring DLC scare me? There are no spiders in the Elden Ring DLC. So far, there's been scorpions and there have been the hand creatures, but there have been no spiders. So I guess the answer would be no, because there are none. <laughs> if there were spiders and you know maybe they would scare me if they were well designed i don't know and so far i haven't been scared by anything in the elden ring dlc no happy canada day to you derek and anyone in canada today who's celebrating the national holiday happy canada day have a good day i hope that you all have a safe one and a fun one and i'd like to hear all about it there you go Moose Day? No, it's not Moose Day. I'm pretty sure Canada Day is kind of the equivalent of American like Independence Day, where it's a day to feel like nationalistic uh, pride and, you know, celebrating all the things that are good about the country. I think. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Ugh. Ugh, man. Yeah, I heard a lot of the country is having a heat wave right now. We are not. We are not having a heat wave. We have a lot of humidity right now, but not a lot of heat. But I've heard a lot of the country has been under a pretty bad heat wave, and I'm sorry for that. I hope that you guys are all staying cool and safe. Kyle from Canada says, thanks. Can I shout him out? Absolutely not, Ungoy. How do you ask me to shout out Kyle from Canada on Canada Day and wish him a happy Canada Day? I would never shout out a Kyle from Canada and wish him a happy Canada Day on my stream. How dare you presume? You're so presumptuous. I tell you. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to end the show. Uh, thank you for being chill today, guys. I'm excited for our new attitude towards Street Fighter. All right. I hope it works. We're going to find out today. Obviously, tomorrow, I will let you all know how it went. 
but our new experiment, okay, <clears throat> is going well. Uh, hopefully, will go well. Fingers crossed, right? Let's see what happens as a result of me taking these frequent breaks to chill with you in between, uh, you know, a few matches. Let's see how I do with Bison with my new knowledge of the character that I'm going to try to employ today. Okay, I'm excited to see how this goes. I want to test it out. So thank you guys for a chill podcast. And uh, hopefully you'll also join me tonight for Riven. That's going to be fun. Tomorrow I will tell you all about how it went. All right, guys, peace out. See you tomorrow.